How you doing? Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, just chill out and check out this little medley, okay? This is my daughter, Brooklyn, so she's gonna sing to you. She's gonna do the whole service. She's gonna do like 20 songs, so. Listen to this one, okay?
wanted to pay tribute to our community for a minute, so we're gonna play a little slideshow, and I'm gonna play this little song, and uh, just some memories here, and some sweet moments of like community, and loving each other, and caring for each other this year. So we're gonna play this and celebrate God's love. You celebrating God's love with me today? Have been with me on that? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you try that one more time? You were like, I was like, are you celebrating God's love with me today? Wait, one more time while she gets this mic ready. It's a stalling tactic. Will you celebrate God's love with me today? <laughs> There's a whiteness in God's mercy that I can't find in my own. And he keeps his fire burning to melt the heart of stone Keeps me aching with the yearning Keeps me glad to have been caught In the reckless rage and fury That they call the love of God Now I've seen no band of angels And I've heard the soldiers' songs Love hangs over them like a banner in with the leaves them on to the battle on the journey and it's never going to stop It will widen name the mercy and the fury of his love And sorrow of this ocean and in their every ebb and flow. Now the Lord and door is open that all hell could never close. Here I'm tested and made worthy, tossed about for lifting up. In the reckless rage and fury that they call the love of God. Give him some praise right now. Thank God for this community. Thank God for all you that make up Streetlight Community Church. We love you, man. We love you. Thank you, God. So praise God for it. Now you got to clap your hands, man. Come on. Come on, get up on your feet. Let's sing.
on, give some praise. God with us. Jesus has come to earth. He came to earth 2,000 years ago. He's going to return. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Every voice sing. That mourns a lonely exile here until the sun of God appears. Please
All right, give a little more praise. Up. We're just doing a lot of songs today, guys, so hang with it, yeah? Sing with us, all right? Christmas caroling to time today, Christmas Eve. Anyone feel free to dance.
Our weakness is no stranger. Behold your king. Sing it.
to get a little groove on for this one, all right? Get a little swivel in your hip. Come on, y'all. Sing it. I know you know it. Let's do it.
Jesus, we just praise your name. We praise your holy name today. We bless your name today. We want your name to be known in this time. We want your name to follow us where we go today. We want your name to follow us into homes and into families and into situations and some of us on our own. We want your name to come with us. We want your name to be alive in the festivities. We want your name to be alive in the conversations. We want your name to be alive in the gravy we're sipping on, okay? We want your name to be alive in the food we eat, in the fellowship we have, in the community we have, in all the interactions we have today. We just ask for your peace to be alive. Let your peace reign. Come on, we're in a tumultuous world, Jesus, and we need your peace. We don't need some kind of fake peace. We need real peace. Give us the peace that only you can give that transcends all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, y'all. Turn to somebody and say Merry Christmas. All right. Just a reminder, this is a family service, so we're letting the kids chill in the service. So, toy with the idea of a kid's message, but we're gonna try to do a hybrid here, so hang with me for adults and kids. Look, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not always peaceful. I'm not always peaceful. I'm not always a peaceful person. I'm not always like that type of person. I'm, I tend to be a nervous person, actually. I tend to be an impatient person, like in my nature. I tend to be like a little bit high strung, a little bit rowdy, a little bit intense. If you don't know me well today, like you can know that about me, that I'm like one of those types that's like really kind of like, you know, nervous energy type person. That's the type of person I am. And I'm telling you, man, like that's usually my MO is to not be that peaceful, to be a little bit stormy, a little bit tumultuous, a little bit intense at times, a little bit emotional, overly emotional. Those of you that know me say amen, right? And I mean... I'm not always peaceful, but yesterday, yesterday my wife actually told me she could feel my peacefulness, and it was such a weird thing. I think what it was, I went out and I like was prayerful for a while, and I spent this time out Christmas shopping, and I went to Summit Mall of all places. That's not a place you find peace on December 23rd, but for some reason, the peace of God was like washing over me, and then I ended up like in my car listening to Rich Mullins, who's one of my favorite artists of all. I love Rich, okay? He speaks to my soul, and I was just like weeping, right? And then I came home, and I had this like perspective of peace. And it was a moment of peace. And again, we have weird ideas about peace, okay? We do. Like, Norman Vincent Peale, who was actually a pastor decades ago, wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, and in it, he wrote this, all right? Hang with me. You, you hear me? Say amen if you're hearing me. Amen. We like call and response here, all right? Because I'm, uh, I, I have uh, insecurity issues and I need you to validate me, okay? <laughs> Check this out. A man who is self-reliant, positive, optimistic, and undertakes his work with the assurance of success magnetizes his condition. He draws to himself the creative powers of the universe. That's what Norman Vincent Peale wrote in The Power of Positive Thinking, okay? He was actually a pastor decades ago. And I was taught things like this, like while growing up agnostic and surrounded by a culture that promoted optimism and positivity. This was like the norm for me in my thinking. There was one basic underlying rule. It was don't bum other people out. And then the second rule was like it. This was the golden rule of my life when I was growing up and when I like in my ideology. The second one was don't be bummed out yourself. Don't bum other people out and don't be bummed out yourself. All right, and if you follow both of these, you'll be at peace, I thought, yeah? But is that the best way to live? Does it really bring peace? Does it? I mean, like, is that what does it? Like, just being happy, just feeling good, just being positive, just feeling good in yourself, just being optimistic, and like, going, man, I'm gonna be successful. Is that gonna bring peace? 
Is that going to draw the creative powers of the universe? And what is that anyway? Huh? Come on, Norman. Get real, man. All right? Get real, Norman. You're a pastor and you're saying a person who is self-reliant, you're supposed to rely on yourself? A person who's positive all the time? I'm not positive all the time, Norman. I fail, okay? A person who's optimistic all the time and only sees the good? I'm not optimistic all the time. Is everybody, anybody here that way all the time? No? Yes? I don't undertake all my work with the insurance of success. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to fail. Anybody feel like they're going to fail sometimes? You ever get that honest feeling? Anybody? Am I just on my own up here? Am I just on my own? Okay, I'm just making sure you're hearing me, all right? Draws to himself the creative powers of the universe. How did that happen? It doesn't work, man. You know what? I like what Philippians 4 has to tell us about positivity much better than what Norman Vincent Peale says. I do. Check it out, okay? Look at Philippians 4 with me. We got this wonderful broken TV because we're in Kenmore. Rejoice in the Lord always. Read it with me. Come on. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is God's word, y'all. Somebody say amen in here, because I know we got somebody that loves God's word in here, do we? Now, again, the Apostle Paul who wrote this isn't telling us to keep lying to ourselves and saying that everything is wonderful. That's not what he's saying. He isn't saying we're always going to succeed. He isn't saying that life is always beautiful and great. Paul is teaching us what true, not fake peace is. Come on, hang with me now, all right? We've been talking about hope. We've been talking about love. We've been talking about joy in this Advent season. We've been in this series where we just have called it hope, love, joy, and peace. And I can't keep the slide up, but I'll get it. There it is. And I mean, we've been talking about Christ coming to earth, and he came to earth, all right? Somebody praise his name today to bring hope, to bring love, to bring joy, and to bring peace. But what does God's peace really look like, all right? Because I mean, when we look at Philippians, all right, I think it gives us some answers. Let's just take a look, all right? Will you? Will you with me? Will you do that? Will you do that, please? Will you? You with me? Verses 4 through 7, all right, talks about the true peace of Christ. And Paul says to rejoice in the Lord always. He says to rejoice. He says it with emphasis twice. Rejoice. Rejoice. Like, Because I think we got to remember. I think it's easy to forget to rejoice. Anybody with me on that? Is Paul giving some empty shout out to call us into blind optimism and constant positivity? Or is he talking about some deeper kind of inner rejoicing? Somebody say inner rejoicing. The inner rejoicing that relates to the joy we talked about during the last week of Advent. Like, again, let's dig into this passage and look, all right? Verses 4 through 7 contain four admonitions, all right? Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident. Do not be anxious and present your requests to God. Now, the term gentleness or graciousness was often used for an attitude of kindness where the normal or expected response was retaliation. That's what the word in Greek means. It means you're going to be gentle and kind when you're expected to, like, do fisticuffs. When you're expected to, like, punch somebody in the mouth. When you're expected to cuss somebody out. When you're expected to get mad. When you're expected to get upset, you respond with gentleness. That's what's being said here. And this term, again, like, it's hard. One time I worked for this pastor, man, and he was mean to me, all right? And it was up in New England. His church is actually folded now. It was a mega church. It had thousands of people, and it's folded, okay? Because he was mean to lots of people. He used to cuss people out and yell at people and treat people bad and overwork them and underpay them and all that. And there was a point where he had the heat on me, and, like, the Holy Spirit gave me a piece, like, and I let the guy chew me out on the phone one time, and I just didn't respond. And I wanted to respond, you know? I wanted to respond with some expletives back at him. And I didn't, but the Holy Spirit gave me a peace. You ever experienced this peace before? And then the dude was like, yo, Ben, are you still there? Like after he went off on me. That's the peace that Paul's talking about. Have you experienced it before? Have you? 
I mean, people should see the graciousness of Christ in us instead of having to deal with us. What do you think? Wouldn't you rather have people see Jesus in you than you? Because Jesus can make it happen. And like, we can't. You know, we don't make it happen, but Christ in us makes it happen. The words be anxious. Can I talk about these? That's worry. That can refer to being unduly concerned about anything. But it's often used in context where persecution was the issue. Both the gospel writers, Matthew and Luke, use this word in their record of Jesus' admonition to his disciples to not be concerned about what they would say when they were under local councils, governors, people that wanted to arrest them, kill them, martyr them, murder them, put them in prison, socially exile them. That's what it meant to not be anxious, to not worry. So is the word of God just flat out telling us here, not don't worry? Like, don't worry, be happy. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. Is that what it's saying? I don't know about you, but I've been following Jesus for 22 years, and I feel like there's a lot more to worry about now than there was before. At 42, with three kids, with a little new cat that pees on stuff, with the litter box to clean, with the dog to walk, and we don't walk him enough, with food to keep in the fridge, and I'm working in a job where like I ain't making major bank, although I found out I make like the average salary for an American, so that's good. But three kids, two, eight, 11, that two-year-old, whoo, love you, Maddie. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's, I got a lot to worry about, do you? And blind positivity ain't gonna save us. Jesus saves us. He doesn't. He's the one that does. Jesus went through all the darkest, roughest, toughest, and nastiest things we could imagine. Amen? Amen. And all for our sakes. Paul was writing Philippians 4 to a church body who was getting persecuted, marginalized, ostracized, killed for their faith. He was telling them, don't worry. Hold on to Jesus. He was saying in everything, through prayer and petition, present your requests to God. He was reminding us when things get rowdy, don't wait until things fall apart or we blow our lids or we make big mistakes and finally throw a Hail Mary prayer pass hoping that God will hear us, all right? He was saying in everything, small, big, tiny, little, minuscule, major, we need to pray. That's what he was saying. Easier said than done, yeah? And what will happen if we rejoice in the Lord always, all right? And a lot of graciousness to Christ to shine on everyone, even our enemies. You got some enemies in your house? You got some enemies you're going to be sharing gravy with today? In the homestead? You got some people that are uncomfortable to be around? Some of you are together in the room, and you're, you're getting along just fine. It's all good. There's no awkwardness here. Nothing, right? Now, if we prayed and everything, and if we allowed Christ to help us love even those that are hard to love, does that mean we're going to feel good all the time? No. It just means what it says. The peace of God beyond anything we get in this life will guard our hearts and minds in the bosom of the Savior. Yeah? Christ Jesus, who wildly loves us and has secured a place for us in eternity, will guard us. You know what the word guard means here? This is wild. Hang with me. This is so good. All right? The term guard was a figure drawn from that arena of conflict, and it was frequently used to refer to the action of a military garrison stationed inside a city. You got me? A military garrison guard, guarding us. The word of God literally says that if we rejoice in Christ, if we shower his love on everyone, okay, even our enemies, and if we present everything to him constantly in prayer, the Lord will guard our eternal soul and spirit like a military garrison stationed inside a city you know how huge that is we're talking helicopters we're talking planes we're talking tanks that's the armies of angels that will guard us do you got that i don't think y'all heard what i said just now is somebody anybody here right now you got kids running around i get it it's crazy in here man just give them some eggnog and some fun dip they'll be fine okay now again please understand Garrisons were loaded. Garrisons had highly trained soldiers like angels. Garrisons had tanks. They had weapons. Let me make it plain here, okay? I played this little app game. It's on my iPhone. It's called Survivor.io. Here's, here's it. Check this out. 
Okay. You you awake with me now? Now that dude in the middle is this little guy, but throughout the game you're attacking these zombies. I love this game. I play it for 15 minutes every night before I put my daughter to bed. All right? Because I sing to her, and then while she's going to sleep, I'm like, I'm gonna sneak in some Survivor.io, right? And again, what happens is like you're this little guy, but then. You keep picking up these weapons because you get these gemstones and then you have this power to defeat the zombies, but it's all surrounding you. Like it's being done for you, okay? It's, it's happening despite of you. Like you're small in the middle and you could never take these things on on your own, but it's swirling around you like power. You hear me? I'm gonna knock this thing down, man. I'm just gonna knock it down. Do you hear me? It's like a military garrison. I mean, like this game is like the angels that surround us. It's like the Holy Spirit surrounding us. It's like the military garrison around us that guards our soul when we rejoice, when we trust the Lord in everything, when we don't worry and we pray about everything, all right? Not that we're not going to, but we give it to God. And when we love our enemies, yeah? Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ is gonna fight your war for you. He will fight for you. Jesus Christ will fight your battle for you. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life to battle your sin. He did. Jesus Christ was brutalized to death so he could carry you through your trials. Jesus Christ died and was buried to take on hell, sin, death, head on. Jesus Christ rose from the grave so he would breathe the hope of the resurrection into your life and into your soul. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ rose. He ascended to the Father to sit at the right hand of God and send the Holy Spirit down to live in you to remind you constantly of all these things. Rejoice in him. Somebody say rejoice. rejoice. Let him shine through you. Somebody say, let him shine. Let him shine. Lean into him. Somebody say, lean into him. Lean into trust him. him. Somebody say, trust him. trust him. Speak to him today. Somebody say, speak to him today. Speak to him about everything you're going through, all right? Because he listens. Jesus cares about you. He is ready and willing to hear you. He's there. He's listening. He loves you. He's crazy wild about you. You might not think that's possible. You might think you got to prove yourselves to him. you got to do a bunch of stuff to make sure that he likes you or something. But he's crazy and wild about you. Did you know that? He's literally knocked out about you. He is. It's the best news in the world to know that that's true. And man, I'm telling you, we need to enter into shalom, man. Because you know what the word shalom, peace, really means? It's a deep sense of well-being that comes through the presence of completion, reconciliation, and justice. It's not some fake feeling. It's not something you get from smoking a little something. It's not something you get from taking back a drink of something. It's not something you get from eating a lot of ham and turkeys, okay? It's not something you get from eating mashed potatoes and gravy, all right? It is completion, reconciliation, justice. It's working stuff out. It literally is like every piece in place. That's what shalom is. It's possible to not have the conflict that we normally have and to have the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, isn't it? Amen? Y'all with me? Let me pray. And then we're going to play a couple more songs and we're going to do some candlelight stuff. You ready for that? God, we love you. We bless your name. We pray you'd work out that situation with the stickers. We love you. We enjoy you. We rejoice in you. Jesus, help us to shower your love on everyone. Help us to shower your love even on those difficult to love because you showered your love on us who are difficult to love. Jesus, help us not to worry but to pray about everything. Jesus, guard our lives like a military garrison. Guard our lives and guard us and fight for us and keep us in the center of your peace. Keep us in the eye of the storm and work it all out. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, y'all. Um, yeah, it's good to be with you. My name's Ben, by the way. Did I say that? Our overall vision is Christ's mission for us, okay? It's based on the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, we are inviting everyone into a lifelong relationship with Jesus. That's what we're about. We'd love to have you connect. I know a lot of you are just visiting today and you're with family. 
but you could fill out a connection card and sign up to be in our communication loop. Like, go to the bar and fill one out. We'll get a free gift into your hands that blesses a local business, Serena Coffee and Tea House. We love them. Give it up for them. Come on. Just making sure you're still there. You can text 330-221-2781 as well. You can email hello at streetlight.life as well. We'd love to have you plug into what we're doing, all right? We'd love to plug you into our email list. And we'll respond as well to worshiping God by giving finances to God. If you're new here, if you're visiting, don't feel obligated. I know, like, preachers always say this. Don't feel obligated if you're new. If you feel led to give something, feel free to, okay? You can. But, I mean, like, we're going to pass these around. You can go also to Streetlight dot life slash giving to give as well and we'll pass around buckets can somebody grab those and get them around roll them around and then let's just rest in the peace of christ all right we did some high energy music okay like i definitely hollered for a little while let's light some candles and let's sing together what do you think i don't even know if we have enough for everybody in this room do we i think we do What's that? Oh, oh, we got something, a surprise. Yeah. Before we uh, mellow this out a little bit and uh, light the candle. Um, real quick, on behalf of the direction team and the church body uh, that is here today, uh, we decided this year we wanted to uh, do a love offering over the last couple weeks, pull some money together to recognize the staff and all the work that they put in this year. So uh, I know Brandon's passing a bucket, but if someone could take his job so he could come up here, maybe. Uh, so thank you to uh, the church. This is uh, above and beyond any offering that, that people are giving on a week-to-week -week basis, but we just wanted to find a way to bless uh, Brandon and his family uh, this Christmas. Here you go. Thank you. Brandon joined the staff a couple of months ago, and he's made a huge impact already, so we were excited to have him on board and uh, grateful that we had an opportunity to bless him. And then Ben and Sarah and family as well. So thank you both, all. Uh, and all their kids for uh, all the work and sacrifice they put in this year. It's been a, a lot of, a lot this year uh, is the best way to put it. Um, so again, on behalf of the direction team and the broader church body, thank you all. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you for the kindness and thanks for playing those drums, man. Thank you for the generosity, everybody. We appreciate it very much. We love all of you as a church body. And I think this is a tender and sweet moment right now. Uh, to, uh, we're gonna kill some lights, we're gonna light some candles. Let's go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and take uh, the first light from the peace candle, which is rolling right there, the peace of Christ. This is literally symbolizing the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding. Maybe it went out, but it's, it's on in our hearts, all right? Yeah, it's a metaphor, okay? We're just rolling with that. This symbolizes, just take it from anywhere, it's cool. Like, it's a flame is a flame. We'll pretend that it's the pink candle, that's good. It's good, yeah. And we'll pass around the candles. This symbolizes the peace of Christ passing around to all of us. That's what this symbolizes right now. That's such a good reminder, isn't it? This is the peace of Christ being passed around to the community of his people and the community of his people that is always outwardly focused and thinking about those that don't believe in him, that don't love him, that don't know him yet. Like the peace of Christ is available to you today as we pass around these candles. You can tap into it whenever you want. That's the invitation right now. And we'll put these all together and then we'll sing together. So we'll take a moment to do that. And Jesus, I just pray for your peace. I pray for your peace over all these people. I pray for your peace over everybody in this room right now. I pray for your peace over all the family situations that will be happening today. I pray your peace for everything that's going to be happening today, for all the opportunities to love on people and to care for people and to bless people today that we're going to have. I pray that you'd open them up to us. Bless all of our families. Bless your people today. Let us be a light for you. Help arguments not to happen. Help kind words to be spoken. Help gentleness be known to all. Help your gentleness to be known to all through us today. We're asking that you would do it. We're asking that you would honor our love for you and our time 
pressing in towards you. We're asking that family members would be drawn to you today. We're asking that everybody would be drawn to you today through all the interactions we have, all of them. Every single one. Please do that. And please bring this to mind when we don't feel like it, <laughs> when we feel anxiety in our bodies or in our hearts or in our souls, bring to mind your peace. Do it, Jesus. Only you can. Only you can do it. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. All right, we're going to sing this song in response. Silent night, everybody. You ready? Come on, everybody. Stand up and let's help me sing this, okay, y'all? This is hard. kingdom 
establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever. <clears throat> to bask in silence for one minute. As much as we can with kiddos, okay? You're the Lord of our peace. You're the one who brings true shalom, completeness, not just a feeling, not just something that we like tell ourselves we have, but something that really is real and it's from heaven. And it's a completeness. It's the ability to deal with conflict. It's the, the ability to speak the truth in love. It's the ability to rest in your mercy. It's the ability to rest, period. It's the ability to see you in the hard things and in the easy things. And we pray that this would just stay with us today and stay with us throughout all of our week and all of our lives as well. Just pray that over every person today. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love you guys. Right? Even though I don't know a lot of you, all right? I swear, I love you. Because you were all created in God's image, man. Because I, that's the deal. That's the deal. We're having a New Year's Eve service next week, same time, 1030 a.m. If you're in town, pop in and see us or spread the word and... Plan to come on out. Hope you have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Peace, everybody. May the peace of Christ just dwell in your hearts. Peace.